Welcome to day 15 of Video A Day February. My name is Deborah Cooper. I serve as the host of the Depths Tourism channel, providing you with important information on modern culture, dating, and relationships in all forms. That includes family as well as romantic. And sometimes I even delve into professional relationships when I get in the mood. I'm really good at that too, playing those power games. But uh, today I wanted to can pick up with where I left off one of the uh, one of them days I don't remember, and uh, do the part two video of men with low self esteem. I believe the first one was we dealt with emotional insecurity. I will provide a link to that. But uh, this one is going to deal with low self esteem and how it manifests in men's lives and in relationships and I'm telling you when you look around and as I go through this you are going to see how many men suffer from low self-esteem I say this all the time people know can quote me have been said this at least 800 million times over the last 10 or 15 years but I really believe that low self-esteem is an epidemic in this country I don't know about the world but it definitely is here and I believe a lot of it has to do with the various abuses that people suffer as children so that means they're adults that are screwing up each generation of kids so that those children don't have a chance there's their their self-esteem is fractured before they even get halfway to adulthood and um, when you talk about self-esteem you know I really think that low self-esteem is at the core of most of our problems we have fears that are associated with social with uh, low self-esteem there are things that we won't try we won't take risks we hang on to the familiar and the comfortable even if it's killing us we don't want to we just think that we're always gonna fail and that we're not good enough I mean there's so many negative thought patterns associated with low self-esteem that keep people stuck in a rut and stuck in bad relationships and stuck at the bottom and when you look at african-american men you can see how many are affected by this low, low self-esteem by how they treat themselves because self self-care and thinking that you're important and valuable and doing something useful with your life I'm not talking about lording it over women like most of them tend to do and I'll tell you why they do that in a minute I'm talking about you know following some of the principles of MGTOW actually they used to not call it MGTOW it used to just be called manhood this is what you do as a young man you establish yourself you do things you know you go into the service you travel you get your money right you get your education on you get yourself a house you get yourself a car you get yourself some money in the bank then you go and find a wife and then you have your children but you already have prepared a nest of safety and security for those people because you are the man of the house but that's not how it is anymore so now they have to have like an you know it's a, a organized group to tell men to do these things when it used to be the kind of thing that their fathers and grandfathers and uncles uh, and older brothers and things taught them so our society has really changed and it's very unfortunate but what I'm gonna do is work is walk through this and let you ladies get an get an idea into the insight that I have into into men's psyche and how when they don't feel good about themselves they don't feel worthy they don't feel like they can accomplish anything they're scared they're anxious they have all kinds of doubts and 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 they're very critical of themselves how that's gonna play in a relationship with you and I'm telling you it's really unfortunate because so many men have low self-esteem and they act in such a stupid way because of it that it makes having a relationship with them just about impossible so these guys talking about well you know women reject us and we are truly forced we have true forced loneliness and they don't want to be with us and this and that well you know listen to yourselves who would want to be with you you whine like a baby and you don't have any confidence in yourself and a lot of them you know neglect their hygiene and, and things like that because 
they don't feel worthy and they're not understanding how those things are all connected if you value yourself then you treat yourself well you are clean you're well groomed your clothes look nice your body looks nice your conversation looks nice your grill looks nice your skin looks nice because you take those things are important to you to make a great presentation because you feel great about yourself inside you want to look great on the outside too but when people don't feel good about themselves on the inside their outside reflects it they look a hot tacky sorry mess and that's what we have with a lot of dudes so let me get into this by the way I'm going to be dividing this video into two parts so this will be part two and tomorrow I'll do part three I have 15 things that I want to talk about that indicate low self-esteem and uh, I'm going to you know break them up so let's start with the definition that's what I like to do start with the definition of low self-esteem there's this organization called the National Association for self-esteem that defines self-esteem as the experience of being capable of meeting life's challenges and being worthy of happiness now you might think well what does that mean it means that you feel like whatever comes your way you can handle it if you get a few little obstacles to in your course to the, the 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 dream that you have of success to your end goal you know you got it you know you're gonna go over it around it underneath it or through it but nothing is gonna stop you that's the kind of belief that you have in yourself and your abilities people with low self-esteem don't have that they are easily stopped you need just one one well chosen sentence and they pull up brakes and er, and they stop they you know just they just give up and also what this means is you know this being worthy of happiness um it's associated with their failure to try you know you see a lot of guys well you know if i do this then this is gonna happen and you know it's gonna be make me sad and it's gonna be just so they already projecting failure disappointment and miserableness before they even get off the bitch and it's the analogy that i always like to use when i talk to guys you know, i talk to men's groups well i used to i gave up on that mess because they were too stupid but one thing that i used to say is, is use a sports analogy because you know a lot of men like so even if they don't follow baseball they still know about it they know about basketball so it's like this okay you want to make a home run okay you have all these visions of you know bringing home everybody on the bases or you want to make like a bunch of three-point shots and just you know win the game you have all these visions of grandeur in your head but you never get off the bench you sit on the bench because you're scared that you're going to miss and strike out. Are you afraid you're going to fall while you're running? You have all the stuff in your mind that tells you how you're going to fail, but you, you, you lost sight of the goal, which is winning. And you can't win. You're not even in the game when you're sitting on the bench. Okay? That's what they do. They just want to sit on the bench. So... Um, the, this this group, the NASE, talks about two components to self-esteem. They break it down into two parts, competency and worthiness. So let's talk about competency. That component is defined as having the conviction that one is capable of producing the desired results, having confidence in the efficacy of our mind and our ability to think, as well as to make appropriate choices and decisions. When you look at the behavior of most men, do you see any evidence of that? They're such royal screw-ups. I mean, just, you know, just stupid. And it's like, you know, well, you know, we need a woman to, you know, be our help meet. And this and that. You're supposed to be help meeting yourself. Why you need a woman to, to guide you and tell you what to do like she's you her child and she's your mama? come on now that just dries up all desire for you all all feelings of lust will go with that child to having to treat you like a child and then you complain that she doesn't want to get busy with you no she doesn't because it messes up her head because it's like incest or something so you know that's not going to work you got to get yourselves together dudes okay then part two the other you know the other component of self-esteem according to the nasc is worthiness and they define that as whether or not a person lives up to certain human values such as finding meaning 
that foster human growth and making commitments to them in a way that leads to a sense of integrity and satisfaction. That might mean that you decide to get married because you know that getting married is going to foster growth in you emotionally, is going to continue your family line, is going to give you a partner, someone to link arms with and, and roll through life together so you don't have to do all these things by yourself. You're going to have someone at home that's going to make a beautiful, comfortable and safe home for you, for you and your children. But you have to have the confidence that you can make that happen. Guys who are whining online about women, you know, treat true force loneliness or women not wanting them and, you know, having given up and all that stuff. Okay, they don't have that kind of commitment. They don't have that kind of of uh, belief in some, themselves and that value. That's just in one example. I'm sure you guys can think of more. So, when you have people that have low self-esteem, it's manifested in many ways. Sometimes, you know, you'll see um, they'll do things like we say, okay, you know, you take things too personally. You, know, you take some personally. This is evidenced online when someone makes a comment about, you know, certain types of men, men that do a certain behavior that's negative and it makes a negative social impact, it makes a negative relationship impact, whatever, okay, it makes some kind of negative impact. So women and some men will say, you know, this is inappropriate and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, instead of focusing on that behavior, which if you don't do that thing, then that means you're not in part of that discussion. But these guys will just take everything so personally. So if you say anything about any man on this planet that could be considered as, as a criticism or a negative about their behavior, these guys come flying in with their little cape. <gasps> but you you hate all men. You say that about all men, 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 men. And they get to crying and whining about it. And it's just such a turn off. It's like nobody's talking about you. Shut up. Oh my God, you're just so sensitive like a little kid. It's just ridiculous. And that's what they do. And they want you to say, you know, but not all men. So they can have it spelled out for them uh, that, you know, you're excluding them. I refuse to do that. If you don't have the intellect to make that determination on your own by reading what I'm saying, because I point out to them, you know, okay, I'm talking about these guys who do this thing, but you don't get upset if I start talking about millionaires that drive Teslas. You know, that's not you. You don't get upset about that and say, well, not all men. So shut up. You know what I mean? It's just like you just want to be all picky about some criticism and uh, try to apply it to yourself and, and look like for sympathy. Nobody's going to give you all that. Shut up somewhere. So let's talk about um, where was I? Okay. Let's talk about some of these behaviors. Now, there's two two behaviors that I've noticed and it's really interesting how they kind of go by gender lines okay so when you lack confidence in yourself there's two typical behavior patterns number one is you will try to control everybody around you you try to control your intimate partners especially with you know negative judgments and you know arrogance you make these snide cutting remarks and you just look at them with with contempt you say contemptuous things to them now for a woman you will have a guy who will either put you down directly you know they used to call it well some of these people call it negging but you know it can go even worse than that they just tell you you're too fat or don't nobody want no fat b and all this other stuff you know they'll put you down or they over inflate their value their talents their skills because they're trying to put themselves in a superior position to you and his goal is to boost his ego, make himself feel better at your expense. And so what we see, when we see this, what we have is these guys that come through the channel talking about, yeah, you know, you women, you know, you don't want a good man because I have a job and and I, 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 I have a car and an apartment. Okay, they're overinflating their value. That's basic adult stuff. That's basic. You're just a basic dude. Ain't nothing stellar or stupendous or even interesting about you. So what? You got a car. So the 50 bazillion other men. And, you know, they don't sit around puffing their chest out because they have a car, an apartment, and a job. Get out of here with that. So you made like the bare minimum step on the ladder of manhood. And you want to just act like, you know, you're supposed to have a parade or some shit. 
out of here with that. Um, and the, you know, by putting you down, right, he's boosting his ego, trying to make himself feel better. I talked about that a little bit in the last video on insecure men. The only way they can feel big is to put you down and stand on your head. That's how he lifts himself up by putting you down instead of lifting himself up and bringing you with him. That's the kind of man that women want. You bring your wife, you bring your woman, you bring your kids with you to the top. You don't stand on your woman to keep her down because see, then how two people are down. You can't keep her down unless you down yourself. Did you ever think about that? You can't rise up as long as you're keeping her down. Both of you stay down. You're just a little bit less down than her, but you're both still down. And I don't think they really think about that part. Now, what's interesting about, oh, okay, then the other half of that, that component is that, okay, so some will get arrogant and, you know, braggart. They want to, you know, get, get loud and vocal. They want to put the, you know, act like they're all so stupid, wonderful and everything. And then there are the other ones who just get quiet. You know, those are the guys you see over in the corner at the club. You can see them looking just so desperate. They want to ask somebody to dance or whatever, but they're just scared of the rejection. And, uh, or, you know, do you want somebody should go to back to school or they should apply for a job or whatever it is that they should be doing. And they don't do it. They just sit there and fill their heads with all kind of negative comp. Well, you know, you may as well not try because blah, 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 blah. And uh, so they never, they never even make an attempt those and what's really interesting is like i said it, it tends to divide by gender lines men tend to do the former the bragging you know the wanting to put people down and stand on their heads and make themselves feel superior and stuff not exclusively but mostly that's mostly the pattern that they choose because it inflates their ego whereas women tend to get quiet oh i'm too fat i'm not pretty enough and this the famous one i'm dark-skinned and that's why men don't want me um that you know all of those things are tied in with low self-esteem and the women tend to do the latter like i said and men the former now what was interesting you know i was reading on that website for the national association of self-esteem they said a close relationship has been documented between low self-esteem and problems such as violence alcoholism drug abuse eating disorders school dropouts teenage pregnancy suicide and low academic achievement and of course that would be true and it's like when men don't have confidence in themselves and they they doubt their value and their acceptability to women they're really terrified of rejection and ridicule and failure so they won't approach women that they're interested in at all and they talk themselves out of situations where you know they really could have got something going but they'll they'll either say that well you know i'm not good at it i may as well not do it because i'll just look stupid or a lot of them will flip it around and make it the woman's fault that he didn't talk to her by saying things like well she looked like she already got 10 minutes she looked like a player she looked like a gold digger she looked like so they try to you know they try to take the responsibility off themselves for being cowards with low self-esteem and put it on her a woman that they don't know ain't never said a word to and it's merely looking at because they really want to get with her, but they're terrified. So in order to make his ego feel better and not admit that he's a scared little monkey, he tries to make it her fault so that he walks away feeling good about the fact that he didn't talk to her. You see how that works? He he gives himself some justification for uh, for um, not not approaching. Now, what's real interesting is when you guys got lo these men with low self-esteem. They get very jealous, they get very controlling, and they actually are terrified of, of abandonment. So they see a woman, they really love her, right? But they, that, that, that love makes them feel vulnerable, and it makes them feel worried that if she leaves, he's going to be devastated, he's going to be by himself. And I used to watch like, you know, Jerry Springer and Jenny Jones and those kind of shows and Maury or whatever and the guys you know they would be like abusive towards their wives very controlling and if you really looked at those guys faces you could see the terror in their eyes the absolute fear that this woman would get the strength to leave them and so what they would try to do is try to make her think that nobody else would ever want her but them that she was so ugly she was so 
so useless she was so stupid she was so whatever because then they would feel like if she believed that then she wouldn't leave them so what they were essentially trying to do is make her low her self-esteem lower than theirs see once again standing on her head to try to uh to make her uh you know to make her stay so let's talk about some of these ways that men manifest low self-esteem one of the number way I'm going to do numbers one through seven uh, in this video because this suck is getting long. I don't want it to be too long. The um, lack of trust. Let's talk about the lack of trust. These are dudes that tell you they can't trust women. They don't trust anybody. Um, and if you see a guy like this, you know you should avoid him by like the plague because anything that happens. He's going to blame you. These kind of dudes who don't trust other people will tend to blame other people for anything that happens because he doesn't really invest emotionally in others. Um, he's never really going to love you, you know, the way that you need to be loved and he's going to blame you for that. It's going to be something wrong with you, which is why he can't. He's going to tell you this, he, why he can't love you like that, why he can't commit, why he can't marry you, you know, why he can't be committed to you in any way, the way that you want. These guys are very distrustful, they're very suspicious, and it's, that shit is draining. Because you know, you get with them right now, you're going to be trying to do jump, jump through hoops to try to prove to him that you're different than them other women or the other people and that he can trust you. But see, at the end of that, he's going to still be playing that same game and you're going to be exhausted, worn out and all depressed because all the work that you did to try to get him to trust you it, it, it didn't mean anything. So he's off to the next woman running the same game and you sitting there looking all devastated. The, if he te man tells you that he doesn't trust you, he doesn't trust other women, or he doesn't trust people in general for, for no reason. I mean, you know, we have, might have reasons to tr not trust certain people, but I'm talking about these ones that make these sweeping generalizations. That, that's someone to avoid. That's someone who's going to be like a black hole yeah, of your time and emotions and you'll never be able to fill them up. Number two, reason number two, these guys have a lot of anxiety. They're very fearful. They're very doubtful about everything. They are just afraid of everything. Their primary fear is that they're going to make a mistake. So when people are afraid of making a mistake, what do they do? Not really much of anything. Um, I don't know. They just, they're never willing to take a risk. Just something as simple as, I mean, I dated this guy right and we broke up after I heard this mess. He's like, I said, so what you getting me for my birthday? And he just looked, he had this look of terror on his face. And he's like, oh, you know, I just thought I would just give you some money. I said, why? Why can't you get a, you know, take the time and pick something? Why? And he started fidgeting. I mean, he just looked like he was like a rat caught in a mousetrap or something. I stood there watching him. It was very interesting. And he was just fidgeting around and just looking like a nervous wreck. And he's like, you know, because I'm not sure... I might get something that you don't like. That's what he said. So that was his big fear that he would get, he would spend time getting something and then I wouldn't like it and his, his feelings would be hurt. And I was like, wow. I mean, you know, I really like this dude. So it's been like anything that he got me would have been, you know, it would have been interesting, I, I would imagine. But he knew enough about me to know what kind of food I liked and stuff. So I'm like, he does know me to a certain extent, but I thought that was really interesting. But after that, I decided he was stupid, and so I broke up with him. I can't deal with no insecure-ass man. So point number three. These guys cannot make a decision to save their lives. They waffle back and forth about everything. I mean, one of the real, you know, the criteria for being able to label yourself a man and be a leader and all that stuff is having the ability to make sound decisions and to make them relatively quickly. You know, using your logic and reason, you make a decision. But men with low self-esteem will just go back and forth. They just cannot take a stand on anything. So they go back and forth, back and forth. I had a friend who had a husband, and this guy, man, he was he wouldn't make a take a stand about anything. He used to get on my fucking nerves. So you ask him a question, right? And he, you know, he would say, well, you know, I could see this and that and blah, blah, blah. But then on the other hand, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so at the end of it, you still, you never knew what he thought. 
you never do anything because he would just go back and forth and it was like he was terrified of taking a stance that somebody might call him wrong so he would present both sides of an argument and then walk away what what was that uh i, I don't know i don't know what's what they're if they're still together what but that shit used to get on my nerves oh my god no kind of leadership qualities there and even the ones who do get around to finally making the decision they will second guess and doubt themselves and well maybe i should have just you know and just go on and on just agonizing over the little decision that they did make and i'm like okay so you made a decision and it might be like not necessarily the best one but at least you made a decision now let's move on you know let's go move on here that life marches on we got other stuff to do and other decisions to make and if that causes a problem then we'll deal with it when the time comes will you just shut up but mm -mm, that's not what they do it can't sleep think about the shit for days it's just unbelievable i've seen people do that and i just look at them just like in amazement number four these people dudes with low self-esteem are critical and pessimistic you know these are the guys you see they like are constantly micro examining and criticizing everything about you 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 a lot of you ladies don't notice because they do it so much you get so used to you get kind of immune to it but i hear everything and it remotely sounds like a criticism i'm gonna blow your hair back because you don't have the right to criticize me so these dudes though you know from what you wear and how you do your hair to your hobbies and interests the books you read the friends you have the type of phone you have i just i mean anything that they could think of to nitpick you about they're gonna do it and um it's because they have this major lack of belief in themselves so they project it outwards onto you that's what that's all about they're very pessimistic they never see a good outcome as even a remote possibility and you know they they always see the negatives they all, never see the positives in anything only what can happen wrong and it's like okay i mean we do need to consider that you know what i mean when we're weighing the pros and cons of situations before we make a decision i'm not saying that should never be considered but if you have someone who only does the cons and never the pros they just like the pros just disappear and smoke in front of their eyes then you have an interesting situation it's not one i'd want to be bothered with but you know y'all ain't me number five deep feelings of shame these guys feel ashamed of themselves a lot now most of the time like like i said at the intro it is rooted in in situations where they were abused as children um their self-esteem got a shock and they didn't really they haven't really gotten past it and it might not just be you know that that kind of abuse it could be physical abuse you know got hit got you know whipped and locked up or chained locked in a room something like that i mean it's some kind of something that really you know somewhat traumatized him and now that he's an adult he feels ashamed of he doesn't want anybody to know that that happened to him so he's hiding it that hiding of you know those kind of traumas causes people to feel ashamed you know they they don't want to be ridiculed about it so sometimes you know this can also talk they can also be associated with their looks with their money you know lack of um their body or you know how toe up it is um skin color hair texture education accomplishments um the fact that they got you know 99 kids all over the place um all, it, it could be a wide variety of things but he's gonna think that women overlook him because of these factors even when the women don't necessarily know that that's part of his history because you know they're just looking at you nobody can tell that you have five kids by five baby mamas they're not going to be able to tell that by just looking at you that's something that would come out later but they do you know they feel ashamed of it because they know it represents irresponsibility and some silliness um, he may have some weird fetishes he may have some weird addictions so he feels dirty you know he feels weird he feels like if a woman found out that she would reject him and he's probably right so um you know that's that's part of it and that, that feeling of being ashamed of these experiences that he had causes his self-esteem to be lowered he doesn't feel worthy he doesn't feel valuable and he's a damaged person Okay, now some of that you know is not his fault um 
but I'm just talking about the result and the behavior and how it would result in problems in a re- relationship. Now, how he got that way, that's not really necessarily what I'm focusing on. I'm just telling you what to look for, okay? We got two more to talk about. Number six, these are dudes that try to impress you. They try to impress you with material items or they try to impress, impress other men with the fact that they have all these women. Because they know for dudes, that's a big deal. You know, so you got a flashy car, you got flashy clothes, you got flashy women. Then to other dudes, you're like a god. And, you know, they, because they don't have those things and they think that that represents prowess and, um, you know, success and all of that. So if you got a guy who's going out of his way to do that and, fl- you know, flash women and talk like, yeah, you know, I got this dime piece, you know, I got this babe, she fly, she this, she that, and all this stuff. And he's that's what he likes to talk about. Or he's always, you know, with these with these really great looking women and he's flashing them around, ta- squaring them around town and everything. But they don't stay with him because he's stupid. But he's, he's, he's building himself up based on the number of women or the way that the women that he associates with look like down in the south they real you know focus on that stuff that red bone stuff or um people having quote good hair and a lot of these dudes you know, try to get some kind of sense of self-esteem from associating with a woman who's biracial or you know whatever and so they yeah you know she mixed she this and that and they say it with such pride it's just kind of amazing i just sit there and look at them like wow that's the best that's that's that that's all you got that's that's where your sense of who you are as a man comes from so you know that's really sad the, you know, the focus is never really on the quality of the woman, but her perceived value based on her physical attributes that other men with, with equally or worse self-esteem to him uh, see as a prize. They think that that's, you know, means something. And um, these guys are just really just very concerned about what other people think about them. So he's going to, you know, he got to wear the latest. He got to have the latest phone, the baddest bitch. You know, he just got to have everything to where other people are going to look at him and think that he's more than what he is based on these things, these possessions that he has. And then the last one for this video, uh, future fears is what I call it, future fears. Men with low self-esteem will project fearfully into the future based on what in their mind might happen could happen might maybe possibly on a rainy day happen i mean whatever they're going to create something in their mind some kind of situation where things could go wrong they are just find it almost impossible to stay in the here and now just enjoying what's happening right now every person every situation is is examined like michael's was examined for what might cause him a problem or something discomfort or anything it's like he can't just enjoy what's going on at the present time he's looking at what could go wrong possibly in some time in the future and worrying about it in advance of it even being a remote possibility you see what i mean it's just ridiculous and they have rarely have anything positive to say about anything or anyone and these guys also, because of their future fears, tend to run away from responsibility. These are the kind of guys, okay, like he want to he wanna do the wild thing without proper birth control coverage. But see, he ain't worrying about that in that moment. I, I know they don't tend to worry about that because otherwise they would strap up. But what he's going to do is if you say that you're pregnant, now his worrying future fears start, oh, she's going to be taking all my money. She's going to be in my... You know, put me on child support. She gonna do this. She gonna do that. Okay, no. She's gonna make sure that you take care of the child that you help make. What you should have done was have all them future fears before and done what I said in that bit that video. And now what? Now, had you done that, then you wouldn't be in this situation. There would be nothing for you to be afraid of. So you know th- th- that that's part of it. That running away from responsibility is very much a part of low self-esteem and you know things get tough and they just jet they just sky up deuces and be out so um i'm going to continue this video tomorrow and we'll go through uh some more uh hopefully all of them eight through 15 i have 15 to go through 
But in the meantime, please share a link. Share a link to something in this February series to your friends and your social media. My goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the month. We got 13 days to go. So I need you all to help get these get the word out about what's going on over here about February. And uh, I'm sure you have some friends and family members, co-workers, or somebody who would benefit from the information in at least one of these videos. Well, this is video number 302. Can you believe it? I, I have been cranking them out. 300 videos, on, more than 300 videos on this channel now. And there will be more to come. This is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. I'll be back tomorrow with another video as we continue the debuary series a video a day through the month of february here on the debsterism channel on youtube i'll talk to you guys tomorrow <music>